Hello everybody. Now I will discuss about the advancement of the different welding processes. Actually, if we look into the conventional uh, welding processes, so conventionally the welding has done maybe small thickness and high thickness material also, but certain principle or a very small modification to the conventional processes can bring is or some economic way we can perform the welding process or there is a problematic situation arises uh, in the welding process so that can be overcome just look into little modification of the existing uh, process so that from that perspective i'll try to explain here the what are the advancement of the different welding processes so first we look into uh, this one first topic that is related to the uh, principle of the surface tension force so effect of the surface tension force is basically helpful to understand to design or so small modification or some additional things we can do with the conventional welding process and it we, we can consider this as an advancement of the welding process now we know uh, with the liquid metal in the or any kind of the interaction of the surface active elements with the liquid metal so it can actually modify the surface tension force during the welding process and we can take this as an advantageous way to uh, develop this modified version of the a conventional welding process. So, surface tension force we can see that temperature versus surface tension graph here you can see if the surface tension can vary with respect to temperature is the uh, negative slope in this way and there we see with this surface tension acting then uh, in that case the oil pool dimension will be like this. So, it actually depends on the depending upon the uh, surface tension because surface tension force is acting the outward periphery from center to the outward periphery and it's a this type of behavior is only explained the in presence of the surface active element so from that perspective if surface tension force acting in this way then uh, it actually making the circulation loop of the oil pool within the uh, molten oil pool and it try to make the width is a little bigger and depth is lower and other way if we surface tension versus temperature uh, is the plot is uh, this way so some this way the changing the positive gradient we can if you see that in that case the the actually uh, this liquid metal is basically try to flow towards the uh, center so when it flow towards the center so it will create the uh, material flow is something like this so this way it will try to enhance the depth of penetration and reduce the weld width so i mean to say that in principle if the nature of the when the surface tension uh, force the nature of the surface tension force changes in that case there is it will affect the change of material flow pattern within the liquid molten pool and based on that the depth of penetration can be uh, achieved so one cases we see that we can achieve very high depth of penetration other cases we can achieve the very low depth of penetration so this principle we can utilize for the development of the uh, process but I, this is the completely effect of the modification of the surface tension force so now the what we can incorporate the effect of the surface tension force in practically the oiling process so here the minor element maybe very small quantity of the particular element is added to the oil pool it can be added by adjusting the chemical composition of the base material for example the base material is having a very small percentage of the sulfur so that can act as a surface active elements but it is already present in the the base element but when we try to make the melt melt it using the some arc welding system then surface tension force will be acting because of the presence of the small quantity of the sulfur within the small oil pool and that we can say the chemical composition of the basement this is the one way to incorporate the effect of the surface tension force the other way the spreading fluxes flux is basically in terms of the halides and oxides on the substrate material so we, the, we the, take the powder of uh, halides or oxides probably and we can spread over the this thing surface we can just paint it over the surface and then this elements the oxides and halides which is the can act as a surface active elements during the oiling process so it can alter the surface tension force during oiling process this is another option way to incorporate the effect of the surface tension effect of the surface tension elements so uh, surface uh, active elements third option is that we can directly add along with the sealing gas because sealing gas is a part of the arc welding system so we can small quantity of the carbon dioxide co2 can be added with the argon sealing gas see here co2 can act as a 
the surface active elements but of course in this case the quantity can be defined which needs a lots of experimental data is required to understand or exactly the quantity of the surface active elements required uh, such that you will be able to uh, get the effect that means try to incorporate the increase the depth of penetration of the oiling process. So, these are the three different ways we can incorporate the surface active elements uh, during the oiling process. Now, in this case overall the overall we can see that we can say the small amount of the very minor element the base material significantly changes in the oil penetration that is the principle and based on that we can develop the activated tick process which is called industrially a tick process a tick means activated tungsten's inert gas welding system so it has been developed just looking into this principle of the this uh, changing of the surface tension gradient associated with the by adding the very small quantity of the minor elements uh, du in during the oiling process. So, here the tungsten inert gas welding process is well known and we have already explained tungsten inert gas welding process or GTAW process. But here this particular process is called activated tungsten inert gas which is just simply modification the way of uh, modification in the sense that we simply add some minor element to the during the oiling process. So, that is the way we can do it and we can develop the activated T oiling process. So, I can say that it is an advancement of the conventional GTW process or T oiling process. Here some example look into that surface active elements effect of the surface active elements. We can see that without flux we can get one kind of the profile with Al2O3 uh, flux here with TiO2 flux and with SiO2 flux. Yeah. So, each and every flux having different effects. So, one if you see all these cases not exactly the penetration depth of penetration is increasing. So, it means that this choice of the surface active elements or quantity of the surface active elements is not uh, appropriate that is why it is not exactly affecting to increase the depth of penetration. But if you look into this part that means with TiO2 flux. So, TiO2 flux in this case is more effective to increase the depth of penetration. So, I mean to say that this is not the optimum this is not the optimum but this is the, the uh, optimum effect of the surface active element. So, I mean to say that we need to do lots of exercise or to lots of experiment needs to perform to find out what can be the optimum quantity of the uh, surface active element such that we can reach the maximum amount of the depth of penetration during the T welding process. So, this is just an uh, examples. Now, I will try to look into the another process which is called the narrow gap welding process which is I say it is a kind of uh, to take certain advantage economic advantage we can get it if we follow the narrow gap welding process. This is not a very something different welding process. So, it is a say it is a nothing to do with the welding process, but it is a kind of technique or technology we can apply uh, that will uh, helps to enhance the the efficiency or maybe most economic way we can perform this uh, conventional oiling process which is called the narrow gap oiling process. It means that we can keep to, to substrate material when very high thickness material is there. We try to perform the joining of the high thickness material. We try to make a some kind of the groove and using this groove we perform the multi-pass oiling process and then we fill this groove and then we try to join the two different uh, this uh, two components of the which is having very high thickness. So, this is the one way we can 45 degree single V group or 45 degree uh, single V group on the both the side. We can put it and we just fill them through the multi-pass welding process we can fill this we can join these two components. So, this is the conventional multi-pass welding process where large volume of the materials is actually required to perform the welding process. But if you look into do not without changing the process we can look into different way. So, let us look into the we can if we perform the welding process it may be the gap between these two plates even it is a very high thickness, but between these two plates we can keep a very a small gap. And in that cases we, we need to fill this small gap if we need to fill it in this case we leave the less material volume to join this high thickness material. But of course, in these cases we cannot do away it is a very specific special design of the welding technique is required it can be the the conventional welding process, but very specific design of the welding process is required to perform this task. This task means this particular the narrow gap welding process. So, here less material the purpose is to perform the narrow group welding process the less material volume is required. Now, we can see what we can design the welding technique such that we will perform the narrow gap uh, welding process. So, this is the another way that first is the, the different way we can see that the oil seam preparation is something this way we can put the oil seam preparation. Then we put laser is a conventional way we can put the laser source there and very highly focused laser we can put it 
and in between we put the wire. So that wire is melted by the laser source and this uh, we can put the but it's a it's a basically a multi pass uh, welding process in this case we enter the wire so with the gap and then at the same time we focus the laser also just to melt the wire and fill the gap so in this way we can create the welded sample it is possible to we can reach up to the the 50 mm thickness material can be joined using this technique so here you can get some this thing the mainly used for the welding of the thick section narrow gap welding process but more economical in the welding for the thick section by avoiding making the large group that is the main purpose of uh, development of the narrow gap welding process but methodology followed small included angle maybe 2 to 20 degree in this variation angle can be there does not require any specialized technique or any specialized equipment but it requires less metal volume deposition at at the same time low welding time both are way uh, maybe you can say we can develop in the economical way as compared to the conventional technique and at the same time since we depositing very small volume so for a very high thickness uh, structure in this case angular distortion is relatively low because we can avoid the large volume deposition so angular deposition will be very low so these are the advantage and other side of the narrow gap welding process here you can see this is the the stainless steel thickness 90 mm uh, can be reached using the narrow gap welding process. You can see this is the way the oil bit profile very small oil volume is required but if you conventional welding process if you try to perform it for carbon steel and thickness 90 millimeter you can get this kind of the profile. So that amount of the material volume is basically deposited to perform the 90 millimeter thickness component using this conventional welding process. So here you can clearly distinguish what are the advantages in case of the narrow gap welding process. Now what are the techniques we try to follow? generally applicable for welding very thick section that is true in case of the narrow gap welding process but conventional welding process you can utilize gas metal arc welding cylinder metal arc welding submerged arc welding gas tungsten arc welding laser welding all the uh, conventional welding process we can utilize but design can be very specific way design can be done but one of the disadvantages of the narrow gap welding is that the lack of fusion on the side wall sometimes it arc may not be able to reach not proper depositing of the material at the side wall. So that can be a problem and sometimes difficult to remove the defect. So it is a thickness is very high also very initial phase there is a defect formation is there it sometimes it is very difficult to remove the defect once it is formed. So that is the main uh, disadvantage associated with the narrow gap welding process. Now you see here one example the narrow gap welding process using laser this is the once advancement in the techniques we can we are using simply laser welding process but we can see the different way the different technique for the laser welding process to perform the narrow gap welding process which is called ultra narrow gap conduction fiber laser welding welding system so we can use the we follow the conduction means basically we are not uh, the perform the welding process not in the keyhole mode we are performing the welding process using the conduction mode but in this case we are using the fiber laser and the wire we are utilizing the supply wire filler wire we can utilize supply filler wire is there and we use the laser but laser we are use the defocused laser beam so defocused laser beam if you use it and that defocused laser beam is used to melt the substance material such that it will be able to melt throughout uh, the wall because if you remember the one might be a problem that we can get out uh, of the uh, this narrow gap welding process if there is side wall is not properly fused in this case. So that problem can be arises if you try to use the focused uh, defocused laser beam. See we just focusing the laser beam here. So here you can see the focused area is the minimum here but it is may not be able to reach the side wall. But we can use the defocus part here at this particular point so we we'll positioning of the laser in such a way we can use the defocus which is spread over a large area and here we try to create the molten pool by with the application of the the extra filler wire so we supply the filler wire here and using the defocus laser beam we melt the material such that the melt material will be circulated with the touch with the both the wall so we can avoid any kind of the lack of fusion uh, associated uh, if you use the defocus laser beam so here simple laser welding system is used but the other way you can use the defocus laser beam to perform the narrow gap welding process. So positive defocusing mode we use to ensure the conduction welding process and at the same time we are talking about that it is we are following the conduction mode but when we use the defocus laser beam so power density is basically low. So that power density is su sufficient to melt the substance metal but at the same time it will produce the 
conduction mode oiling process we not necessary to perform the keyhole mode oiling process if you remember that uh, when you try to perform the laser oiling system we try to create the keyhole uh, when we try to join the very high thickness material but in this case even it is very high thickness but we follow the principle of the narrow gap oiling process but we use the the defocused beam such that we ensure there is a conduction mode oiling is there and using this thing we can both the side wall can be melted and properly supply of the molten metal is in connect with the sides of the this component so this way we can use the this uh, narrow gap uh, oiling process using the defocus laser beam in this case another point the keyhole induced even there is a keyhole is there so sometimes porosity can be produced so keyhole induced porosity is basically avoided using this particular narrow gap oiling system here this is another way to perform the narrow gap oiling process that is called the arc oscillation so arc oscillation we can see just simply to cover up the whole uh, domain uh, within the the gap between these two components so that's why we use the arc oscillation so here in this case is magnetic oscillation arc in uh, narrow gap tungstens uh, gas tungsten arc oiling process so gas tungsten arc oiling process gtw is a conventional process but in this case is we use the additional setup just to deflection of the arc using some kind of the magnetic field we create this iron core oiling torch is here the here the oiling torch creating the arc but using the external creating the magnetic field we can deflect the arc such that the during the uh, deflection of the arc it will try to cover up of the whole domain so here the side wall arc is there we can create the molten pool and this arc is creating with the side wall of this work so this zone we can able to melt it again next part again it will arc is deflected this side other side so it will creating the molten zone and the side wall so this way just by deflecting the in the arc using the some external magnetic field we can perform the the oiling process so this is called narrow gap oiling process but we are taking the advantage of the the arc oscillation so here also we use the conventional GTW process but techniques or design are different with the aid of the external magnetic field we can perform the narrow gap oiling process. This is another type of the advancement of the oiling process which is usually known as the hybrid uh, oiling process. So mostly hybrid oiling process has been developed as the laser assisted hybrid oiling process. So along with the laser there are different types of the oiling process can be combined. Uh, we can take the advantage of the both if we combine the laser and arc. So we take the advantage of the both and to perform the oiling process and here we try to look into see the laser assisted hybrid oiling system. So laser and the arc are integrated to provide the primary and secondary. So laser is the primary source and arc is the secondary sources for the joining of the process in case of the uh, laser arc hybrid system. Due to the synergic action of the laser beam uh, and the oiling arc, hybrid oiling offers so many advantages over the laser oiling as well as the arc oiling alone so with respect to both the oiling system what we, we can get the lots of advantages uh, using the hybrid laser oiling system so laser can be merged with integrated with the TIG system that means GTW system laser can be with plasma system also laser can be MIG or MAG oiling system can also be integrated to perform the uh, oiling process so advantage is the we can perform the oiling at relatively higher speed so for example in arc oiling process we can perform the very slow oiling process the the oiling speed is usually very slow as compared to the laser oiling system but when you perform the arc is integrated with the laser system then we can perform is the better oiling speed high oiling speed is possible to perform then deeper penetration is possible in this case probably we can enhance the uh, efficiency of the laser absorption with the addition of the arc uh, or the interaction of the arc so in that way it can able to produce the very high depth of penetration during this process very good oil quality can be achieved with the reduced susceptibility to the pores and the crack. So that can be reduced in pore formation and the crack formation with the addition of the combining the laser and arc oiling system. If you perform the individually then in that case pore and cracking crack formation might be uh, more when we consider the individual oiling system. Good gap bridging ability. So when there is a gap in between these two components it's a gap is not uniform sometimes. So that gap bridging ability is very good when you uh, add the combining of this thing. Stability of the arc, stability of the laser is because both way the interaction between these two helps. The laser helps to stability of the arc in other way arc also helps to stabilize the uh, laser system. So that's why process stability and efficiency is relatively better than that of the efficiency of the laser system because laser alone uh, efficiency is thermal efficiency is very low but when you combining the arc the efficiency can can be enhanced here you can see that gma torch 
GMW process here is the laser beam. So both are acting together and metal vapor it creates the keyhole formation and the stability of the keyhole is held by the GMW process. So combining these two the uh, hybrid laser uh, welding system is possible to develop. So principal we see that combining of the gas or solicited laser either CO2 uh, laser or we can use the NDYG laser and the arc welding laser for example GTW, GMW or plasma arc welding. Uh, both power supply can be utilized in this particular hybrid welding system. Then the focused laser beam when try to uh, focus on the workpiece surface and that can vaporize of the workpiece material and the very deep field capillary or keyhole formation is usually done using the focus laser beam. But if you see the power of the arc welding process introduces the more energy of the zone of the laser beam impingement causing the process to ionize thus enhance the arc stability. So in this case the when interacting of the laser with the material it actually enhance the stability of the arc. The hybrid process is actually result increase the both oil penetration and welding speed. So that means depth of penetration is much more because of the combined effect of the laser as well as the and even it is keyhole mode laser as well as the, the arc power also there so combining these two depth of penetration is much more and even we can perform the welding process much higher speed as compared to the individual process. Now the arc also heats the metal and helps the laser beam absorption of the welding of the high reflective aluminum surface. For example, it is when you try to perform the laser welding system for highly reflective material. So, laser light can reflect it from the surface but if you add the, uh, the integrate with the arc welding system, this arc will helps to much better absorption of the laser light even for a highly reflective aluminum alloy system. So, that is why it helps to enhance the efficiency of the overall system, hybrid welding system. Now, we will try to look into that uh, other oiling process, uh, other system which is called the micro electronics wire bonding. So, of course, in this case, the it is a kind of the micro joining system. So, we can we can see the development of the micro oiling system in, in pertinent to a particular application. So, in this case, uh, in the integrated circuit and other semiconductor device, which usually perform the micro electronics wire bonding process. So, here wire bonding is the most this process is most cost effective and having flexible interconnected uh, technology. So, in properly designed wire bonding can be used for the high frequency. So, that means the process can be very very high this thing. So, frequency of the bonding is usually very high using uh, in case of the microelectronics wire bonding system. Now, how it works microelectronics wire bonding. So, basically two wires can be connected on the different way. One is the principle of the joining is the ultrasonic welding system. So, we see that ultrasonic welding system the high frequency vibration is created and the vibrated energy converted to the, uh, the, the interfacial heat energy and very localized position it can melt but of course as a bulk material it does not melt, bulk material does not melt but it can melt very localized position. Then two materials can be joined together by following the principle of the ultrasonic welding process. Now the bonders are capable of bond almost every half second that means almost every half second one bonding one wire bonding is possible to process that means it is a very fast process in that sense. But process description brings the together two materials so we bring together two metal to be bonded together bonded using the heat and of course little pressure and at the same time we use the ultrasonic energy is transmitting here. So therefore when it is using uh, heat pressure and ultrasonic energy all these um, elements are associated with this process um, bonding process that is why it is called the, the thermosonic uh, bonding process. We see more details about this microelectronics wire bonding. Uh, okay. So, here we are not uh, going into much details about the microelectronics wire bonding but here we can see that the in general we can say that uh, <coughs> this uh, microelectronics wire bonding we can take the advantage of this thing some the ultrasonic energy and with some pressure or sometimes ultrasonic energy pressure and uh, it can be uh, heated sample can uh, heating can also be applied in this process such that microelectronics oil bonding can be can be done very efficiently. Then we try to look into the electron beam micro oiling. This is another micro oiling system that means very small scale oiling system. Uh, we can consider this as an advancement of the uh, oiling process and which is mainly applicable of the very miniature components and here. Uh, we know that almost conducted under the vacuum that we know uh, in electron elect in conventional electron beam system. It provides the highest quality joints uh, compared to the laser that we know and that is the typical characteristics of the any electron beam oiling system. So, here you can utilize the beam power 
100 watt to 5 kilowatt is is uh, usually available but 100 kilowatt to 5 kilowatt is not exactly suitable for the welding of the micro scale component with a small scale component electron beam having even minimum 100 watt that is also not suitable for joining of the micro scale components basically try to burn the sample so in this case the heat intensity is much higher even for the 100 watt electron beam so here the electron beam micro welding process has been developed just by so, uh, taking the modification of the scanning electron microscope ACM and here we modify the optics and these optics can be modified then the transmission of the this uh, electrical energy uh, that uh, which is uh, this uh, mod by modifying the optics we can we can perform the, uh, the power density can control in such way it is applicable for the micro link process. So, it is actually developed by the GIS company having maximum power of the 6 watt. So, six, only 6 watt power electron uh, this power is sufficient to perform the, the micro welding using the electron beam as a uh, source of the energy uh, in this particular case. Now, here you can see what we can works. So, we know the ACM scanning electron microscope principle we usually use the ACM we usually use the electron microscope to take the image to develop the image we usually use the ACM in, in the laboratory. But that same ACM can be utilized for the uh, joining of the micro scale electron beam welding si system. But how we can perform these things? Let us look into uh, this way what we can utilize the ACM for the electron beam micro welding process. So, ACM what is the analysis of the substrate? Basically, we, analysis of the substrate we can try to capture the image using the ACM. So, here least possible energy input is required and basically high resolution, so high quality to image this thing. So, high resolution is basically main priority is in when you try to using the ACM. And, but to perform this thing it the actually associated with the multiple apertures for the screening of the off axis electron which is out of axis electron can be uh, screening using the apertures and uh, we at the same time multiple apertures is used in the ACM system and two condenser lens is usually used in the ACM system for the reduction of the excess electron condenser lens is used and finally it creates a very low power beam with extremely small focused spot on the sample surface that will help to create very high resolution image. So, here look into the figure this part this figure first part of the figure here see the electron source the principle of the scanning electron or components of the scanning electron microscope ACM. So, here electron source is there and we see there are the two condenser lenses are there condenser lens and say and after that we take the aperture is the just to uh, screening of the off axis electron. So, we use the aperture we can adjust the the focusing uh, this uh, this size of the aperture uh, can be adjustable. So, aperture is used then we use another objective lens and here is the the specimen. So, here the specimen is there and the observing mode. So, this specimen is there and we try to look into observe the specimen image using the scanning electron microscope. But here you see these are the elements associated with the scanning electron, electron microscope. So, condenser lens are there, aperture lens are there, objective lens are there uh, of specimen. But here purpose is to create minimum low beam power but very focused position and on the sample just to get the that much of resolution of the electron microscope. Now, if we remove that um, when you try to utilize the same scanning electron microscope for the electron beam micro link system here we use that removal of the apertures and the one condensation lens. So, here the removal of the apertures we can see uh, the removal of the apertures and one condenser lens we can utilize here condenser lens we can we can remove and aperture also uh, we can uh, we can remove and then apertures reduce the effective beam power basically we can reduce the effective beam power is basically reduce reduces the effective beam power by removing the apertures or uh, this um, in this case and uh, see here then electron uh, this calm objective lens and then focusing on the uh, on the substrate here this power is the very low power but this power is basically applicable in, for the micro welding perform the micro welding of the system. So, this way we can see the simply modification of the ACM is basically usable in case of the electron beam micro welding system. So, this is a de uh, developed and here we can see modification is reversible it means that both may be used as a both an observation tool as well as the welding tool. So, we can use the welding process also 
uh, oil, as a welding tool we can utilize the SCM or uh, the same way we can use the, the as an observation tool SCM we can utilize uh, for both the purposes here. Uh, here application of the electron micro welding you can see the, the for example the joining of the thermo elements thermo um, elements made of uh, nickel chromium or nickel wire combination. So nickel chromium nickel wire can be made or diameter of 70 micrometer uh, can be joined together using the electron beam micro welding system and of course each allows the almost globular beads for the temperature measurement in the micro range it basically uh, creates the bead size can be the globular shape and uh, for the temperature measurement in the micro image in this case the application is the favorable for the heat conductive properties such as the copper or aluminum micro soldering with the electron beam as the heat source is examined using the copper tin soldering process. So, it means the micro soldering process copper or aluminum can be joined using this particular this uh, electron beam micro welding system. Even oiling of the liga nearly pure nickel gear to the tool steel gauge pin can be joined or welded together using the electron. These are the micro welding system. These are the few examples uh, for the electron beam uh, application of the electron beam micro welding system. Now, there is a further uh, micro welding system by developing the from the conventional uh, uh, resistance spot welding system so which is known as the resistance micro welding process so of course we use the same principle but uh, the downscaling of the conventional uh, resistance spot welding process we can convert to the the resistance micro welding system here we this kind of the system can be utilized for the in fabrication of the electronic components and mainly utilize the this is a micro link system. Here we know the heat generation H equal to I square R T I is the current apply, R is the induces resistance and T is the time. So this way we can calculate what is the amount of the heat generation using the in case of the resistance micro welding system. Now this conventional resistance welding system it works in such a way that we supply the force and at the same time there is an application of the high current AC or DC power supply is there high current at the contact surface there is a because of the contact resistance and the high current is applied but very small duration of the time. So at the where the contact resistance is high so at this particular point it is a converted to the the heat generation will be there based on this formula H equal to I square RT. So heat generation will be there and at this part with the application of the force or pressure then two components can be joined. So this is the principle of the resistance spot welding system. Now what, what we can distinguish the large scale conventional scale resistance welding system or micro scale welding system then you can understand what are the development is required for the application of the micro welding uh, for the micro welding application. So in case of the uh, large uh, difference from the large scale oiling system the micro oiling system is the electrode pressure is much lower in micro oiling system that is required the low pressure is much lower much lower electrode pressure is basically results in the high contact resistance so high amount of the contact resistance will be there because electrode force is less so that actually demands that reduces the oiling current when contact resistance is very high it, it requires less oiling current and of course when there is a less welding current and contact resistance very high so that is the chances of the electrode the electrode sticking might be there so in that case the this contact part the resistance is much what the sticking of the electrode to the workpiece might be a problem associated with this thing so here usually the maximum nugget diameter is about 33 percent of the electrode diameter is usually produced with reference to things but chances of the electrode sticking is much more in the micro welding mode since the electrodes are not water cooled that is another system because the size of the electrode is very small so usually it is not at the water cooled so that is the main differences from the conventional resistance welding system so but micro welding system is usually mostly applicable in case of the non ferrous metals and alloy for example copper nickel platinum aluminum these are the usual materials we can utilize uh, for the, the micro oiling system and but in case of the regular or conventional resistant oiling system we mostly use in case of the steels but sheets for the micro oiling system often coated with the aluminum gold nickel tin etc but figure uh, in this cases so we can see that for micro oiling system we use the coated sheet also but in this case coating is for coating for use uh, usually used for the silver gold nickel tin etc but in for regular conventional welding process usually the steel sheet is coated with the zinc so these are the 
differences based on the applications and based on the principle and the in terms of the parameters or what are the problems in case of the micro welding system as compared to the conventional oil, uh, resistant welding system here i am trying to explain all this phenomenon so here. now further we see there is a advancement in the to handle the very miniature component uh, which is uh, using the laser system one of this is the shadow technique so shadow technique is basically shadow stands for the uh, stepless high speed accurate discrete one pulse welding so basically we can utilize the energy of the one pulse based on that we can develop the shadow technique and this shadow technique is, is basically used for the small axisymmetric parts which can be turned first during the one single pulse laser it means that if you see the stainless steel pulse mode welding process since pulse mode means the supply of the energy is basically on off on off mode so one duration the energy supply it's melting and uh, but at the same time it's a advancement is there and the next pulse uh, there, there's a gap between the supply of the end of the supply of the energy to the and the initiation of the energy for the next pulse so that gap is usually known as the pulse off time so always there is a supply of the energy on off mode at the same time laser can move one particular direction so in that case with the moderate speed it will create this kind of the profile on the surface in case of the pulse laser welding system now suppose with the pulse energy one pulse energy can be utilized and the in that case is when laser source is moving over the duration of the one pulse on time so it can move very fast then we can utilize the energy of the pulse over a long distance so that will create this kind of the this very smooth or aesthetically it's a very uh, good uh, the profile so this way uh, this technique is usually known as the shadow technique basically utilization of the or one pulse energy during the process just by increasing the the speed of the uh, welding process very high speed we can use it such that it looks like the total distance is covered during the on time of the laser pulse so here the smooth surface is produced and high process speed is possible using the using this system and of course this process application for the micro technology application a very small scale application we can we can apply this shadow technique and uh, best joint parts produce very less debris or pollution on the surface very less pollution on the surface and surface appearance rips very looks uh, looks very nice neglecting the time needed for accelerating the parts and of course the processing time is very very less in this case so this way uh, this is the the particular uh, shadow technique which is the advancement of the uh, laser welding system and we can use and which is mainly applicable for the very small cases for example uh, we can say the micro technology we can apply this uh, shadow technique and of course this shadow technique is mainly applicable in case of the metallic material for example stainless steel and similarly there is a laser droplet welding so in this case the welding is realized by uh, liquid gener generated liquid droplet transported to the system deposited on the parts to be welded together in in conventional welding process the welding gap between the parts is basically the gap is very very high uh, in that cases probably the quality of the laser welded system is substantially lower in case of the conventional laser welding system of course in this case the a droplet offers sufficient material to breach the gap so that means if there is a gap is there we will apply the liquid molten droplet uh, just to breach the gap uh, these two components this is we will use it now uh, in this case but even different gap size can be breached using the suitable selection of the droplet size so it means that the if say gap is very big say then we have to create the very bigger droplet sometimes it may not be possible also so we cannot get too much of very bigger droplet we can create to gap between these two component so that's why this laser droplet welding is mainly designed or developed is very small uh, component very smaller scale component usually the or you can say this is the uh, micro welding system we can utilize this laser droplet welding such that gap is between these two lows and we have created the droplet in such way that it will be able to bridge the gap between these two components and uh, of course the droplet can be created it can be controlled by modulating the the different laser system laser parameters also now uh, different material addition can be possible in the in the form of a droplet so droplet is here but we can create the droplet creation part we have created the droplet 
then droplet detachment from the wear, then droplet flight, then droplet landing on the surface and then after that droplet solidifying during after solidification the two two components can be bonded or joined together. For example, this system is applicable for the stainless steel titanium and st stainless steel of the 200 micrometer thickness and 200 micrometer gap. We see 200 micrometer thick plate uh, can be joined using this process because in that case sometimes it is very difficult to maintain the age preparation of the 200 micrometer sheet to manage this thing. So therefore, even for 200 micrometer thickness sheet having the 200 micrometer gap, so this welding uh, the, if you join this these two sheets can be joined together by using the creating the uh, transporting the laser droplet in the desired position. So that is why even 200 meter th for 200 micrometer gap is huge for a 200 micrometer thickness material. So that is why that huge gap can be uh, possible to join together using the, the laser droplet welding process. So here actually this process has been developed just looking into the phrasing the, the innovative understanding of the uh, two different components or facing the difficulties problems of the two different component based on that this process has been designed or has been developed looking into the problem of the welding of the very small component when there is a gap between these two uh, is very high. Similarly, there is another type of the welding process this is called the laser spike welding. So, laser piled welding it is basically we can take uh, the, the bar joint uh, lap joint configuration. So, here you see one metal is there and then this is another metal is there. We can supply the laser power on the top and we can create in such a way it can create the, uh, the oil pool in such a way the partial it will be entered to the second part and it can be joined together. So, here even there is a gap between these two we can the in the lap joint configuration if there is a gap between these two also that kind of the configuration the oil link can be performed using the uh, laser spike welding process with the application of the laser power here and the two components are joined together by creating the small oil pool and the, this thing. So, here also you can see this is also creating the oil pool even there is a even there is a gap between these two component but using this particular process we can join uh, to see it in the but it is limited to the lap joint configuration. So, here you see the laser spike welding method is capable of bridging the gaps between the two sheet metal even gaps can be more than 100 percent of the top thickness of the material even gap is very huge also in that cases also this laser spike welding is applicable. The idea is firstly created the uh, quite melt on the top plate we melt the molten zone uh, on the top plate and the, at the end of the laser pulse the melt is pushed towards the bottom plate or the oppositing plate such that the it is achieved with the creating of the spike added to the heat conduction pulse the high laser pulse be greater than 1 kilowatt and short pulse time should be less than uh, 0 0.3 millisecond. So, this way we can achieve using a welding a in kind, kind of creating a kind of the a spike. So, this is the uh, process we can develop this thing. So, it means that for create the molten pool and then just push the molten pool from the top surface to the bottom surface then it creates kind of the spike see the we can achieve with a spike by creation of the spike and the two components can be joined even there is a huge gap between these two sheet in a lab joint configuration. So, here you see the spike welding of 200 micrometer thick sheet the stainless steel uh, can be joined using this particular process. So, this is we can say that this is the advancement of the welding process here also we when during the miniature of the components uh, face the difficulties in there is a gap or uh, geometric conflict in such a that that between the two sets then we try to find out what we can join these two component. So, this method is a, I can see it is a we can simply use the laser system and we can use the simply using the the lab uh, laser system for a lab joint configuration, but here we can create the spike and we perform the oiling process even there is a gap is huge. Here is the technology, but we use the simply conventional laser oiling system, but technology or process development are something different as compared to the conventional oiling process. Now, there is another process development or advancement that is called the twist technology. Twist is the transmission welding by an incremental scanning technique. So, transmission welding process we remember that with the transmission welding process though using the laser system in this case if the top surface is the transparent to the particular wavelength of the laser then at the interface we somehow 
we have to create some absorption of the laser light at the interface then melt the interface and the two components can be joined together that is the principle of the laser transmission welding process but in that case if uh, bottom surface can be absorbent of the laser system or we can make a some absorbing medium between the two interface then only laser transmission welding can be performed but in this particular case suppose both material are transparent in this case without addition of the in between stage that means at the interface if we simply create some kind of the path using the apart from the following the straight path if you follow the incremental scanning technique the different scanning strategy if you follow it then two components even they are transparent but two components can be joined together so here this can be process is the high dynamic beam oscillation is is basically followed here that are overlapped to the normal welding direction so one normal welding direction which not just simply is moving linearly the uh, when we dynamically beam oscillation can be created such that it can create different scanning path so in this case the polymer welding is performed with the high brightness laser source are is the use and this dynamic oscillation is used to prevent the, the thermal material damage which might occur due to the irradiation of the at the focal spot so that is the purpose of utilizing the the dynamic oscillation of the laser beam now the twist approach is introduced to additional process parameter one is the amplitude and the frequency the what is the amplitude of the this thing uh, and frequency that can influence the way of the laser beam energy is coupled to the material so what is the amplitude and what is the frequency you are applying during the deflection of the uh, during the varying of the laser light in this particular process when you try to develop the different path but in this case it is applicable using the you know transparent material polymer without any absorbing additives at the interface so that is the main thing associated with this process so two transparent material can be joined together but there is no need to apply any kind of the absorbing medium at the interface of the two sheets so this is the development just to follow the beam deflection with some following certain amplitude and certain frequency we can design the process and based on that we can join the two transparent material using the laser light so it is called the twist technology but remember twist technology is basically limited to the polymeric material only so here i have tried to explain the the advancement of the different perspective or different angle what are the advancement of the welding system which is little deviation from the conventional welding system and we, and there the what, what the development just to follow the the process development or different techniques has been developed and that we can consider this as a advancement of the welding process which is a uh, little different from the conventional welding process or we are using the all the these uh, elements the which is common for the uh, con conventional welding process but we develop the process or technique in the different way just to modify the uh, existing process or just use the process in the or apply the system in the in the innovative way so this way this kind of the welding techniques is known as the uh, advancement of the welding processes so that's all thank you very much for your kind attention mm -hmm.